Andrew here with my second booktube video and today I'm going to talk about my to be read or TBR. Now, like most of you I've got quite a big to be read list and today we're going to talk about physical books rather than ebooks because I have about four or five hundred ebooks that are like in storage waiting to be read so I can read on my phone and when I'm on holiday but when I'm at home I like to read proper books. So I've split this into two videos and part one is going to be fiction and part two is going to be non-fiction because I do have a massive pile of non-fiction to be read. So we'll start with the fiction. Now this is not including books that I've bought this month or books that I'm currently reading as I'll use those in my wrap-up video at the end of the month. So, just so that you know that some of these books have been hanging around for quite a long time, I'm going to start with this one. And that is The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas by John Boyne, which was <laughs> the World Book Night edition from 2014. This was given to me by my friend uh, Phil and I haven't actually read it yet so I really do want to read it but it's just one of those things I've just never thought oh I must read that book now so that's on my list of to be read. The second one is a book I've probably had for about 10 or more years 10 years um, and that is uh, Rome by Emile Zola. Now I've got loads of pocket classics and I've read most of them but this one I have not even picked up and started. It was second hand when I bought it, but I haven't read it yet. So this one is a must for this year at some point. And another one that's been hanging around for about 15 or 20 years is Penguin Classics. In fact, when was this published, this edition, does it say? This translation was 1993. It's probably, yeah, probably about... 20 years old I would say this copy and it's Fedor Dostoevsky The Brothers Karamazov. Now I bought this book because Marilyn's favourite book was this or one of her favourite books and she wanted to play Grushenka in The Brothers Karamazov movie and they wouldn't let her. So I always wondered what, what it was about this character that she liked but again I've never got around to reading it. So again on my to be read. The next one is uh, one of the books that I've picked up from a charity bookstore or bookshop. Um, basically my local doctor's has a charity bookstore, you go in you pay 50p or whatever you want to pay and take home a book. So whenever I'm down there I have a look, pick up some books if I haven't read them, just because they're good to have a read in the bath. I usually then pass them on to my mum or she passes them on to me. Um, the first one I've got here is this is Friends, Lovers and Other Indiscretions by Fiona Neal. Now this has been hanging around for a few months, it's not been here for a long time but again it, it came out a while ago. 2009. So, and this book I haven't read. Next, again, is another one of those charity bookshop um, or bookstore buys, and that's Jenny Colgan's Talking to Addison. Again, it's probably something I'm going to read in the bath or when I want something really quick and I'm light hearted to read rather than something heavy or biographical, which is what I normally read, as you'll see from the non fiction pile when I do that one. The next one is a book my other half bought. He bought it because he'd heard such good things about it and wanted to read it, but he doesn't really read really big books um, because he just gets bored. And again, he prefers really factual books and comedy books. So I haven't read this yet, and I know you're all going to like freak out because everybody's read this book or seen the film, and I've done neither. So I'd rather read the book than see the film. And yeah, it's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stig Larsson. I haven't read it. Um, I want to. It's going to be one of the ones I pick up next, I think, because I do like this sort of book. And obviously everybody raves about it, so I really want to see what it's about and see if it is what it hypes up to be. The next book is that book on Thomas Hardy, Poetry. So it's not really a fiction book, but it's not a, a factual book either. It's a book of poems um, that I got from last month from the Folio Society. So I sort of read those in bits at night. I like to read poetry out loud because I like to hear the words. So yes, I'm reading that one. I mean, that one I don't mind putting on the I'm reading it now thing, but it's on my TBR because it's going to take me year, uh, probably a year to read that because I can't read a lot of poetry all in one go. Next, we move on to the fictional biographies or books of fiction about real pe people. And there, yes, there are a lot of Marilyn in here. So I do apologise for those of you who aren't Marilyn fans and particularly aren't interested. But the first one I've got isn't Marilyn related. In fact, the first two aren't Marilyn related. The first book I've got is by Jerry Skull, and it's called I Fatty, and it's about Roscoe Arbuckle. 
abandoned as a boy in Kansas, Fatty Arbuckle found adulation first on stage and then in the new medium of the cinema. In his day, during the second decade of the 1900s, Fatty was more popular than Charlie Chaplin. He became the first screen actor to make a million dollars a year. But in 1921, he was accused of the rape and murder of actress Virginia Rappe, when who he had counted at a party in San Francisco and who died a few days later. Though he was eventually acquitted by a unanimous jury, the virulent speculation by the press ultimately destroyed Arbuckle's career for good. Framed for a crime he did not commit and demonised by the conservative powers that hyped the case as emblematic of all the evils of show business, Fatty Arbuckle was the O.J. Simpson of early Hollywood, the first modern celebrity whose presumed guilt and alleged innocence scandalised a nation. In I, Fatty, Jerry Stahl, the celebrated author of Permanent Midnight, tells the story from Fatty's own perspective. This is an incisive and sympathetic look into the life of a man whose astonishing rise and fall set the precedent for the scandals that still shake Hollywood today. Now, Johnny Depp says, I love this book, so it's got to be good, because Johnny Depp likes it. What's not to like? This was a gift from a friend of mine named Chris. Um, so I plan on reading this one soon because I love Hollywood and I just want to say that Roscoe Ar Arbuckle hated the nickname Fatty. Just a matter of fact we go there. Next, again, not Marilyn related, is by Lucy Holiday and it's A Night In with Audrey Hepburn. This is just a fun little book, I think, that, again, something quick and easy to read, just haven't picked it up yet. Um, so actress Libby Lomax has retreated into the world of classic movies where the immortal lives of her favourite screen goddesses seem to offer so much more in the romance department than her own life. After a terrible day on the set where she embarrasses herself in front of the entire cast and worst of all, its sexy bad boy actor Dylan O'Hara, she plonks herself down on her battered couch to watch Breakfast at Tiffany's for the trillionth time and suddenly Libby is astonished to find screen icon Audrey Hepburn, complete with a little back dress, trademark sunglasses and vintage cigarette holder, sitting beside her and, giving, and pro proffering her advice. But has Libby got what it takes to turn her life from a turkey into a blockbuster? Perhaps with just a little bit of Audrey Hepburn mag magic, she might just pull it off. So yeah, it's supposed to be quite good actually, but I, yeah, I can, haven't read it. So, yeah. And the next one is the sequel to that one. And this one is the start of the Marilyn related fiction. And it's A Night In With Marilyn um, by Lucy Holiday. And there's another one coming out soon, which is A Night In With Grace Kelly, I believe, which will be really good. Um, so after dating the hottest star man on the planet, Dylan O'Hara, Libby Lomax has come back down to earth with a bump. Now she's thrown herself into a new relationship and is determined to be a better friend to best pal Ollie as he launches his new restaurant. Despite good intentions, Libby is hugely distracted wherein a newly reformed Dylan arrives back on the scene. And while she hasn't been watching, someone else has filled the Libby-shaped hole in Ollie's life. Then another unwelcome guest turns up on her sofa. In the I can't even speak, curvaceous shape of Marilyn Monroe, Libby doubts that she's the right person to offer her advice, but perhaps she should listen up before it's too late. So that's the sequel to that already happened. Now this actually was in a two book set from from a well known supermarket. So it was like two for eight pounds or something. So it was quite quite a deal. Uh, the next one is um, a self published book by Don O. Melvaney and it's called The Last Year in the Life of Marilyn Monroe Volume 1 A Hidden History. There is a second volume but I think it's only available on Kindle which is a shame because I do like to actually physically own these books. So basically it is a film noir version in book form about what might have happened to Marilyn. Problem is it's going to be playing with the whole scandal bit um, which nobody in the Marilyn community because there is a community really likes but we'll talk about that in a Marilyn video later. So um, also by Donna Melvaney is No City for Dreamin which is subtitled The Lost, Lost, Long Lost Man Manuscript of Lou Beach. Um, so this is actually written in script format so it's sort of like a play rather than a, a book. Um, yeah and it, it, she's about the death of Marilyn. All, all these fictional books seem to focus on her death for some reason. Obviously she didn't have a very interesting in life but her death was more interesting. Sad but there you go. The next one is The Marilyn Diaries um, by Charles Kissilo. Now this is the second edition um, with updated and new excerpts in it. Um, I do have the original and there is also another copy which has a different picture on the front which is called caused a bit of outrage because it features a photoshop picture of her with John Kennedy. People don't like that, trust me on this. Um, 
but I did enjoy the first one when it came out but obviously this is a reissue um, of what might have been in Marin's diary but so much has been come out on, on Marilyn's last days and her relationship with the Kennedys or non-relationship with Kennedys, whoever you want to believe, that it's sort of very outdated. But it's got a beautiful cover. <laughs> so that's partly why I bought it, because I love the cover. And the last fictional book, no, the last but one fictional book, yeah, the last but one fictional book is called, ha, huh, surprise, surprise, Marilyn's Red Diary by E.Z. Friedel. Um, it was rumoured that she had a diary where she wrote all her shocking secrets about the Kennedys, which is not true. Um, so yeah, again, it's another one about the Kennedys and all that. And it's a real shame because she had such an interest in life, it would be more interesting to focus on perhaps her time in the orphanage or her time in early Hollywood. And there are really good fictional books that do that, but this is not one of them. Um, I have read a bit of it, put it down. Saying that though, I probably will read it. It won't be like Joyce Carol Oates' Blondes, which I never finished. Sorry, Joyce. And the last one is, <laughs> this is quite a fun looking book, and it's called What Happened to Marilyn, and it's by Alexander Rigby. And it's completely different. So basically, she wakes up in, a Savannah, in Savannah, and in, informed that it's the year 2062, so she's time traveled. Um, and people start recognizing her apparently and then it's a question of ways does she go home or does she stay with this guy in 2062 what does she do so this one's a little bit different because it's not um marilyn was killed by the kennedys marilyn was killed by the cia marilyn was killed by the mafia marilyn was killed by aliens from roswell it's none of that nonsense it is marilyn time traveled I like that idea. It's a bit more different. I quite like those. I like time travel books, I've got to be honest. There's a few of them in my collection. So that is the last one on my uh, to be read. So of the fiction books, yeah, that's a lot of them. So if there's anything there you want me to read and tell you what I thought, obviously let me know and I will do that. Um, but it also is a bit of a kick in the book bag for me to put them out there and say, look, this is what I've got. And now I've got to read them. Okay, so I will be back with part two of the To Be Read in a few days with the non-fiction To Be Read list, which is, I'm sorry, but even bigger. And yes, features more Marilyn, but also other things. So, see you soon. Bye.